Yeah, I probably would use instead of ever changing, I would say ever expanding. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Because what, what we saw when we started this off is roll around, how do I automate my data center? How do I get a cloud experience in my data center? What we see changing, and quite frankly, it's driven by this whole app refactoring process, that customers want to deploy apps, maybe in the cloud, maybe develop in the cloud, and so they need an extension to their automated data center into the cloud. And so really what you see from us is an expansion of that ACI concept to Ranga's point. We actually really didn't change. We're just, we just extending it to container development platforms, to different cloud environments, but it's the same idea. How do I automate the end-to-end -end network uh, uh, reach as well as the segmentation? What is the right the right, uh, sorry, security regime in this you know, cloud era. How is it evolving? Well, I mean, what we're doing is we're bringing tools like uh, Tetration, which now runs on-prem and in the cloud. Things like StealthWatch, which runs on-prem in the cloud. And simply bringing them security frameworks that are very effective. We're, I think, uh, a very capable, uh, well-known security vendor. Um, but bringing them the capability to run the same capabilities in their uh, on-prem environments and their data centers, as well as in multiple public clouds. And that just eliminates the seams that hackers could maybe get into. It makes common policy possible so they can define policy around an application once and have that apply across multiple environments, which not only is easier for them, but it eliminates potential mistakes that they might make that might leave things open to a hacker. Um, so for us, it's that simple, bringing very effective common frameworks for security across all these. Cisco has embraced the idea of being a platform and not a siloed individual product line. And so for a service provider like CenturyLink, uh, for us to be able to embrace that same philosophy of the, the platform of services, what that means is that our engineering and field ops folks, our operations teams, do all the hard work on the back end to make sure that we have established all of the right security, the right network, the reliability, the global scalability of our specific uh, platform of services and being that leader in telecommunications. And then we're able to lay that Cisco platform on top of it. And what happens then from a product management level is once you've established that foundation, it's really plug and play. The customer calls and says, I need calling, I need meetings, I need you know, whatever it is they need, and we build that solution and very quickly can put those uh, components into play and get them to use the service right away. So what we've done across the portfolio, even in primary storage, is made sure that we've done all sorts of things that help you against a ransomware or malware attack, keep the data encrypted. I think the key point, actually, I think um, SiliconANGLE wrote about this, is like something like 98% of all enterprises are going to get broken into anyway. So it's great that you've got security software on the edge, whether that be IBM or RSA or Blue Code or Checkpoint or who cares who you buy the software from, but when they're in, they're stealing. Um, and sometimes, you know, some accounts have told us they can track them down in a day, but if you're a giant global Fortune 500 with data centers, it may take you like a week. So they could be stealing stuff right and left. So we've done everything from, we have right once technology, right, so it's immutable data, you can't change it. We've got encryption, so if they steal it, guess what, they can't use it. But the other thing we've done is real protection against ransomware and malware. That's a great question in terms of modernization of infrastructure. And there's some really interesting trends that I think are occurring. Um, and I think the one that's getting a lot of us is really edge computing. And what we're finding is, depending on the use case, it can be an enterprise application where you're trying to get localization of your data. Um, it could be an IOT application where it's, it's really critical for latency or bandwidth to keep compute and data close to the thing, if you will. Or it can be mobile edge computing where you want to do something like analytics and AI on a video stream before you tax the, the bandwidth of the cellular infrastructure with that data stream. So across the board, I think edge is super exciting. And you can't talk about edge with, like I said, talking about artificial intelligence. Another big trend, whether it's running native, running with an accelerator, an FPGA, I think we're seeing a myriad of use cases in that space. But security's end to end, to your point, right? I've got software defined access, I've got mobile access points, I've got, you know, Tetration, I've got, you know, all of these products that are helping people that in the past they were just patching holes in the dike. You know, hey, this happened, let's put this software product in. This happened, let's put this in. And we actually built a security practice like the last three or four years ago. 
it's growing. You know, the number of people that are, whether it's regulation, compliance, you know, I got some, a real problem, I think I've got a problem and I don't know what it is, our ability to come back and sit down and say, let's evaluate what your situation is. So I was talking to the networking guys and said, wow, enterprise networking is up, way up. What's driving that? The need to transform, or is that, you know, what is it? And they're like, a lot of times it's something along security that's making them step back and reevaluate, and then sometimes that tra trans translates into an entire network refresh. There are tools that people use, and everybody's environment's a little different. Mm -hmm. So some might want to integrate in and use Ansible, Terraform, you know, tools like that. And so then you need code that'll help integrate into that. Other people are using ServiceNow for tickets, so as something happens, integrate into that. People are using different types of devices, hopefully mostly Cisco, but they may be other, using others as well. We can extend code that goes into that. So it really helps to go in different areas. And what's kind of cool is that our, um, there's an amount of code that where people have the same problems, you know, and you know, you start doing something, everyone has to make the first few kind of same things in software. Let's get that into exchange. Um, and so let's share that. There's places where partners are going to want to differentiate. Keep that to yourselves, like use that as your differentiated offer. Um, and then there's areas where people want to solve in communities of interest. So we have, uh, we have someone who does networking and he wants to do automation. He does it for power management in the utilities industry. So he wants a community that'll help write code that'll help for that area, you know? So people have different interests and you know, we're hoping to help facilitate that because Cisco actually has a great community. We have a great community that we've been building over the last 30 years. Right. They're the network experts. They're solving the real problems around the world. They work for partners, they work for customers, and we're hoping that this will be a tool to get them to band together and contribute in a, in a software kind of way. They have the right reason to be afraid because so many automation was created once, used exactly once, right? <laughs> and <laughs> then you have the cost of aut traditional automation. You have the complexity to create a network automation. You guys realize that network automation, uh, you cannot have network automation only work on a portion of your network. You have to work on majority, if not all of your network, right? So that's became very complex. Just like you want a self-driving car. You can go buy a Tesla, a new car. You can drive on, on its own. But if you want your 10-year-old Toyota driving on its own, Retrofield it, that's very complex. Well, that's today network automation had to deal with. You had to deal with multi-vendor technology, multi-years of technology. So people spend a lot of money. The returns are very small. They, so they have a right to be afraid of them. But the challenge there is, what's the alternative? Yeah, I think that is one of the things that's very unique about the DevNet community is Within the community, we have technical stakeholders from small startups to really large partners or huge enterprises. And when we're all here in the DevNet zone, we're all engineers and we're all exchanging ideas kind of no matter what the scale. So it becomes this great mixing of you know, shared experiences and ideas. And um, that is some of the most interesting conversations that I've actually heard this week, is people talking about how maybe they're using one Cisco platform in these two very different environments and exchanging ideas about how they do that. Or maybe how they're using a Cisco platform with an open source tool and then people finding value and thinking, oh, maybe I can do that in my environment. So that part of the ecosystem and community is very interesting and then we're also helping partners find each other. So we do a lot of work around, you know, here's a partner in the Cisco ecosystem who goes and installs Meraki networks, right? Um, here's a software partner who builds mapping technology on top of the indoor um, Wi-Fi networks. And getting those two together, because the software partner is not going to install the network, um, and the network person may not write that application in that way. And so bringing them together, we've had a lot of really good um, information coming back from the community around kind of finding each other and being able to deliver those outcomes. Yes. What are you guys doing, Tom, we'll start with you. How are you guys working together to infuse and integrate security into the technology so that from a customer's perspective, those risks dial down? 
Yeah, so, so we're in, Cisco's integrating security across all of our product portfolio, right? Um, and, and that includes our, our data center portfolio all the way through our campus, our WAN, uh, um, all those portfolios. So we continue to look for opportunities to, um, to integrate you know, whether it's uh, dual factor authentication or, or things like secure data center with a fire, you know, uh, a highly scalable multi-instance firewall in front of a data center, things like that. So we're, we're definitely looking for areas and angles and opportunities for us to not only integrate it from a product standpoint, but also ensure that we are ha talking that story with our customers so that they know they can, they can leverage Cisco for the full architecture yeah. from a security standpoint. And the same thing on the storage of the data from an encryption perspective and as the data gets moved or is mobile, you know, that, that level of security and policy follows it, you know, wherever the data's moved. More secure. Of course. And I mean, everybody always wants more performance. They want lower costs. Security, in many ways, has begun to trump those other two attributes. They've, they've become table stakes. Security as well, but security is really number one now. Yeah. Talk about that, talk about the major trends that you're seeing. Well, of course, of course security now is top of mind for everyone, board level conversations, executive level conversations all the time. I think what ends up happening is in the past we would think about it as network performance, cost, et cetera. Security as a tangent kind of side conversation. Now of course it's built into everything that we do.